So one of the things you will see us cover this week are um, the idea of electric fields. And the field idea is something that you might have seen in an earlier physics class when we cover gravity in physics 4A. Uh, we can talk about gravitational field. And, um, and there, there's a, a few different sources of motivation for introducing field. And um, <laughs> there's a more modern reason for field, especially after you cover special relativity. Uh, the concept of field is what um, what allows you to have a force between things in a, a local a way without a spooky action at a distance. But that's a more modern physics reason. We don't really need to invoke that. Let me give you perhaps the most... Uh, um, motivating reason for introducing field at this point in this place in your physics education and um, and just how useful the idea of a field is. So let me refer to one of the questions in your textbook that's also uh, also one of your homework questions. This relates to uh, this problem here. One of the questions in chapter 5 asks, ah, here it is. Um, so the way the question is worded here, it already refers to the idea of field. Uh, you know, question 83, the charge per unit length is shown, uh, it gives the density, and then what is the electric field at point P? So, okay, this question presumes the um, existence of idea of field, so it doesn't quite motivate it the way um, I would want it motivated. So let me imagine um, having a slightly different question so that we can use this as a starting point for motivating the idea of field. So let's say uh, instead of this exact question, we had, okay, I'll charge for this. Uh, and then there is a, a point charge Q at point P, and none of this. And then um, they can be asking the question, what is the force on charge Q? And this is the kind of question you can do by, um, by the method that you see <laughs> described when I do this problem in one of the videos. I uh, break, break this up into small pieces. So in the video that you will see, um, I do it in terms of electric field, but given the connection between force and electric field, um, the method you use for calculating electric field, that's basically the same method for calculating the force directly. And um, and if you're just looking at that, you, there might not be much of a motivation for introducing the field. It's just, you know, tomato, tomato. It's two different ways to do the basically same thing. The incentive, the real reason to introduce the field becomes clearer when you consider um, potential follow-up question someone could ask here. So let's say instead of asking for force on a point charge Q, for part B, imagine someone asked this. For part B, say, um, there is now another rod uh, with its left uh, end at point P. Uh, so let me just draw a version of that. So the question could specify the parameters of this rod. Maybe it has the same length as um, as the other rod, or maybe it doesn't. But this question would specify enough of the parameters to uh, tell you how much charge is on this rod and all that stuff. And then someone asks you the question, the follow question. What is the force? on this rod. This is where things get challenging. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, I guess I've never actually asked this question of the class, but um, 
So given how much difficulty I see, uh, pe- I see people going through, um, working out a question of this form with the point charge, I'm almost willing to bet that if I asked this more complex version of the question, I'll have maybe one or two students in the class who can do it um, in any semester, not just this particular semester. And most people will think it through and maybe give it some attempt, but uh, there will be some mistakes made in some steps and <laughs> won't quite do it right. And the introduction of ideal field is a way to break up this approach so that you can do one difficult part in one way using one approach and then use the result from that to tackle other questions that someone else might ask. So with the idea of the field, what you can do here is as the first step, you can work out what is the electric field as a function of position. And I'm not telling you that's easy. It, you know, it takes, I guess uh, it's basically the, similar to this answer here, except you treat A as a variable. So, um, so the answer you have for this uh, electric field at point P as a function of A, you can re-express uh, as, okay, that's my electric field as a function of X. So that's one step that takes integral, it, that takes integration and detailed set of steps to work through. Once you have this uh, expression for electric field, that packages a lot of mathematical work that's gone in. And using that electric field, now you can calculate what is the amount of force on one piece here. So some amount of force that's on some charge dq times the electric field. And I want you to note carefully how this expression here, expressing an infinitesimal amount of force is different from this expression here. And there is a real difference in meaning here. And separating out those differences in meaning, it's a lot easier when you can actually break up problem solving into two distinct steps. And what electric idea of concept of electric field allows you to do is exactly that. So when you have Coulomb's law stated in terms of forces, as we do, um, as we do just before introducing electric field, uh, right here, if you are looking at Coulomb's law stated in terms of force, there's really no getting around the fact that you have to deal with a pair of charges you have to look at interaction, uh, force interaction. And a lot of the problem solving involving electricity and magnetism can be really simplified. We can divide it up into um, discrete conceptual pieces and calculational steps if we separate this step out. One step of calculating electric field, the effect on the space around the charge due to the presence of the charge, that calculating electric field, and the second step of calculating the force due to the electric field. As in you have one charge here that's modified the space around it, and then you have a second charge that now fills that modified the space. Um, and so for most of the semester, you won't really see us using this formulation of Coulomb's law. A lot of the times our inquiry will be about the electric field. That's because we have this relationship in mind. Once we have figured out everything in terms of electric field, then uh, this second step is actually really easy most of the time. So, so we leave that for more special applications and, um, and we focus out most of our effort in working out the electric fields. And so, so that's really the most uh, direct motivation for electric field. It's a calculational tool that really helps organize problem solving. Now, uh, as you might see in one of my other lectures, that's not the place where we will start because um, the modern view is that the it's the electric field that's the fundamental quantity. So I will always write this as a, a, my 
our defining equation for electric field. We start with the field and that gives us the force. And, um, and electric fields are real. It's, it goes beyond the calculational tool, but, um, we'll reserve, um, of the ability to see that to later this semester. Uh, for now, if you just think of field as a calculational tool, okay, that's not wrong. And that gives the most direct motivation for introducing fields and uh, all the techniques that we'll go through in the next couple of weeks.